What's up, guys? We're back again with another quick one from the Neville Sub. This one is called Tips for Dealing with Shame, Fears, Doubts, etc. And this is a solid post right here, guys. So let's just get right into it. So <clears throat> we all know these are parts of us that are here to protect us and just need our attention and love. However, I haven't seen many talk about it. Usually the advice is to ignore them and keep persisting with our new concepts and affirmations. But that doesn't work for everyone. So here's my tips. Hope it helps someone. These emotions need a purpose. Perhaps now they run on autopilot. If you're someone who has struggled with bad luck or has gotten comfortable being unhappy and not getting what you want, simply ignoring these feelings won't work for you. So you just repurpose them. Write a letter or have a conversation with these feelings when they arise. Thank your fears for protecting you and wanting to keep you safe. Thank your doubts for the same. Thank your shame for wanting you to be better and thank your impatience for spoiling you and wanting to give you the best quickly. Ask your fears to focus on, what if it actually worked if I don't stop? Isn't not trying and not knowing scarier? Ask your doubts to doubt your current 3D reality, to doubt your negative thinking patterns and doubt all the self-imposed limits. Ask your impatience to be impatient about all the good things that are to come. Transform it in excitement for when your manifestations are born in the 3D. Acknowledge these emotions, don't ignore them. Don't push them aside. They are just a part of you that needs some love and some new purpose. Ask them to help you and work with you to achieve your goals and manifestations. Get creative. Listen to your intuition about the method and do what feels right. Writing a letter was just my method. Hope this helps someone. And I love that post. That is such a solid post right there. So I'm going to read a couple of the top comments here. So personifying the negative feelings as helpers. Now that's some creative self-love. Amazing and powerful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. I literally been searching for tips on this all day. Uh, agreed. I'd additionally recommend wondering what these things are trying to protect you from. Doing so resulted in me realizing I didn't even need protection from what these defense mechanisms were defending against anymore, which in turn has made it easier to pull myself out of a spiral. So the OP writes, yep, definitely take you out of it. Another thing I also do is just laugh and tell myself, ah, it's fine. I get what I want anyways quickly too, regardless of my doubts and fears. I know laws are laws, but we also create our own laws in our own universe. So another comment here says, oh my God, this is amazing and exactly what I need. I'm a big time overthinker with a negative childhood and I've been manifesting a relationship even though it's worked. I've struggled with all of these feelings. You mentioned my whole process of manifesting this relationship due to hardly ever having or seeing a healthy relationship since childhood, especially with parents and partners. That person did not put a period in that entire thing or a comma. Ever since I started the manifestation problem process, everyone always said, ignore the 3D and I try so hard, but the, it seems the feelings you mentioned push back harder. So it seems that what you mentioned here would be extremely effective for someone like me. These, I need pra to practice it, but this is a blessing in disguise. Immediate resonation, thank you so much for this. So the OP wrote, same definitely inherited my negative thinking from my mother, LOL. But yes, ignoring the 3D works hard when you have to deal with this. And don't get me wrong, this too needs work. It's not a one-time fix, sadly. So they go they go back and forth here, but really what I, what I wanted to touch on is, yeah, ignoring. So different people take the word ignore and they might take it literally. When I'm talking about ignoring, me personally, I had a comment ask me about this. It is what you're doing is you are conforming your outer reality to the inner reality that you want. You have this inner reality in your mind. You picture it with clarity and ignoring the aspects of that 3D that are popping up over here that you don't want. You're hitting the pop-up boxes on them so that you can have this new, this reality, the one that you want. So that's what I mean by ignoring, not just ignoring everything outright, but this, this whole post is so on point because it is doing exactly what I did in my recent post about using mental alchemy. How can you complain your way to success? And then I had that other post that was, how can you just use humor? How can you, if somebody's triggering you, if something's triggering you at work, 
Something's triggering you during the day, in your relationship, with your spouse, with your parents, with your children. You can find some humor with it, with your employees at work. Find some humor about the situation because the humor will dispel almost like magic the attachment, the attachment that you feel, the the elevated importance that this thing is on, the subject, the pressure around the situation, it, it dissipates it almost immediately. And now your awareness is that, well, there's you, you like you shift your awareness gently. You're not fighting against this thing, which causes more resistance. What you resist persists because you are focused on the problem. Um, and I've used this before in my life. I've seen other people use it and I, I know how powerful it can be, but this is another way of doing it. So this is basically asking these emotions. And the other thing that's so cool about this is that I think a lot of the times what blocks us in our lives to achieving what it is that we want is this feeling of not being safe doing it. There's some, somewhere in the subconscious, somewhere in the past, we've associated that us having our desired and us being in our desired reality or us having that outcome that we want, that we will somehow be unsafe by having that, by the, having that success, whether it's in love, it could be, I will be unsafe for fully being vulnerable and loving this person. Um, I won't be secure by doing that and opening up and opening my heart and putting, giving this a chance. It could be the feeling of success. Like now I want to have this success. I want to be financially free. I want to be independent. I want to have I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a multimillionaire. I want to travel, but you feel also like, oh, it's it's a risk. And I don't know if I feel safe doing that. Being an entrepreneur is risky. And I have all these things telling me that, oh, more money, more problems. And the more that I climb to the top, the harder you fall. And all of these different things that we have going on in our, in our subconscious that are just playing themselves out. It's like the story of Icarus. He flies too high, to, close to the sun and he, his wings get burned. I mean, there's literally like so many things that we've been told that's, that go in, they're sitting there and they're really preventing us because we're saying, well, we also are acting out of self-preservation, right? We also want to survive. We also want to continue to exist, to be alive. And well, we're, we're harboring all of these beliefs down below the surface about if you have success, if you get money, then you're evil and you're a crook or all of these different things going on below the surface it sabotages our ability to achieve those results, even if that's what we consciously want, even though the, if we've made the decision consciously. So these fears, she's talking about, ask your fears to focus on what if it actually works? What if I'm actually safe? What if it, what if not trying, isn't that actually scarier? Not trying and not knowing? And it's working with the fear because there's that book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And it's so... It applies to this so much because you'll never get rid of the fear. The person that goes out, the guy that you see going out talking to all the girls, the guys that you see conducting business deals, the guys that are in the NFL, the guys that are taking that shot at the end of the game, like in overtime, they're not scared. They're never, the fear never goes away <clears throat> for any of these things that you do. <sighs> Mochi, what you doing, buddy? What you doing? The fear will never go away. You simply have to feel the fear and do it anyway. So it's getting your these emotions back on your side. Now they're playing on your team again. So it's ask your doubts to doubt the current, the current results you've been getting, the current results that you don't like. Well, how about we start doubting that? Is that, <laughs> that can doubt your negative thinking patterns. Doubt your self-imposed limited beliefs. Ask for impatience and be ask your impatience to be impatient about all the amazing things coming your way. Transform the excitement, transform it into excitement for when your manifestations are born in 3D. Anyways, guys, this was an absolutely amazing post. Mochi agrees. Isn't that right, Mochi? His eyes look so blue in the sun. He's getting so big too. I don't know if you guys saw him in the recent video, but he is literally getting bigger and bigger by the day using the cat box all by himself. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. Is that a boy going to dance? Is a boy going to dance? <laughs> all right, he's probably not in the, mood, in the mood to dance right now. Also the light, his eyes are so blue that the light, when it, it's bright like this, I think it really like, 
is harsh on his eyes. But anyways, um, with that being said, guys, let me know what you guys thought about this. Tips for dealing with, with these emotions, shame, fear, doubts, etc. I thought this was really on point. And with that being said, guys, drop me a like, drop me a comment, hit me with a subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.